Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are discussing OpenAI's ChatGPT search, but really what we're discussing is the absolute search wars that have now engulfed the internet. It has been a very long time since anyone actually factually, practically threatened Google's dominance of search. And yet now it is so clear that whether it's Google that wins or not, what search means is going to change in a fundamental way. We've got perplexity out here innovating, really pushing the boundaries of what the summary model of search can be. We've got Google trying to catch up with their overviews and at the same time trying to figure out how they can do that without disrupting their own business model. And now we have OpenAI entering the ring as well. In an announcement post, OpenAI said that their new ChatGPT search service is designed to provide fast, timely answers you would have previously needed to go to a search engine for. In other words, the idea here is that rather than having to cruise around and click on links and try to find the right reference point, you instead just get a summary that answers the question right there for you. OpenAI's model is powered by a fine-tuned version of the GPT-40 model and can serve up photos and information from the internet. OpenAI gave examples of sports scores, news, and stock quotes. And just like with perplexity, users can also ask follow-up questions to refine their search. ChatGPT's search produces both inline and sidebar attribution to news publishers and other data sources OpenAI has licensing deals with. And this is an important point. One of the things that OpenAI keeps saying as they sign these deals is that it's not about training data, it's about how they surface the most reputable sources in their search. For example, results-related queries about the election will be directed to sources like the AP and Reuters. The service is now available to ChatGPT Plus and team members on mobile and the web, with other subscribers gaining access over the coming weeks, followed by a rollout to free users. The company has also released a browser extension to allow users to make ChatGPT Search their default search engine. OpenAI said they plan to keep improving search, particularly in the domains of shopping and travel. They also plan to add voice mode and access the O1 reasoning models for what they call deeper research. Speaking to the idea that this is where search is headed, a quote from Louis Dreyfus, the CEO and publisher of Le Monde. We are convinced that AI search will be, in the near future and for the next generations, a primary way to access information. Partnering with OpenAI positions Le Monde at the forefront of the shift. It allows us to test innovations at an early stage while safeguarding journalism's core values and integrity. Matias Sanchez, the SVP of Global Strategic Partnerships at Axel Springer, says, As AI reshapes the media landscape, Axel Springer's partnership with OpenAI opens up tremendous opportunities for innovative advancements. Together, we're driving new business models that ensure journalism remains both trustworthy and profitable. I do not think it's at all an accident that OpenAI is going to pains to highlight all of their partnerships with companies like the Associated Press, Condé Nast, Dot Dash Meredith, Financial Times, etc., especially given that perplexity is now starting to be awash in lawsuits and trying to catch up on their own licensing deals. OpenAI, for their part, are very clearly excited about this. Sam Altman tweeted, Hey, I'm really sorry to keep hyping our own product, but you really should get ChatGPT Plus and install the Chrome extension for search. I am cheerfully the first to admit when we ship something that isn't very good, but this time, it's really good. On the positive side, some people noticed that it was really fast. AI entrepreneur Sully Omar said, My only question about search GPT, how on earth is it so fast? Seriously, what and how did they cook? It's nearly instant. OpenAI's head of applied research, Boris Power, responded, Early feedback was that it's slow, so we put effort into making it super fast. To which Sully said, teach me the way. Rowan Chung from The Rundown writes, First impression trying it feels fast. It even pulled our logo. Second impressions, he continues, around 2x faster than Perplexity Pro, but not as in-depth. Rowan continues, I like the source tagging better than Perplexity, says the company name rather than a number. No related questions at the bottom like Perplexity, which is one of my favorite Perplexity features. Rowan then gives his power rankings. My AI search rankings as of today, Perplexity Pro over ChatGPT Search, ChatGPT Search over Google Search, Google Search over Bing. This doesn't mean ChatGPT Search, Google, or Meta can't eventually beat Perplexity, but it does mean the AI web search frenzy just got serious. A word of caution, however, he finally adds, ChatGPT Search is hallucinating when you ask it for tweets. X is notorious for being hard for search engines, but Perplexity at least says it can't see content instead of making something up. And that indeed brings us to some of the negative comments. Hallucinations are very high among them. Professor Ethan Malik writes, finding very high hallucination rates right now. I'm sure it will improve. Investor Steven Sinofsky says, made up stuff, non-reproducible answers, slow. What more could you not want from search? Copenhagen Business School professor Christian Hendrickson writes, I have searched GPT and my very first search thread was a failure. Later in the conversation, it started completely hallucinating the newest dev diary. Perplexity is still my go-to. Benjamin DeCracker, who it should be noted is at OpenAI competitor XAI now, writes, I don't really get ChatGPT search tried multiple quote-unquote searches, and the results are very similar to just normal GPT results. Very text-heavy. 
was expecting a more search-first experience. Now, what's clear, as you heard from all of these things, is that the perceived battle is with perplexity. Perplexity is in an absolute arms race to advance new features. CEO Arvind Srinivas tweeted yesterday, Until now, we mainly prioritized informational queries. But search is about anything you want to do. A navigational query is essentially a link in a sitemap as an answer. We made it even easier to navigate the web, especially useful when you set perplexity as your default search. Developer Nick Dobos responds, This is huge. The only reason I didn't have perplexity set as my default was the 25% of time I needed to click the top result and navigate to it. Testing Catalog News writes, Perplexity just got even faster. But what's super important, it is accurate. Perplexity 1, search GPT-0. Overall, the sentiment is pretty positive. Alam writes, OpenAI's design team is really stepping up and crushing it with their OS experience. GPT Search looks incredibly slick too, and with their strong brand position, they're well-placed to capture a massive slice of the market, probably the most. And indeed, we're kind of dealing with layers of distribution here. Perplexity recently boasted of serving 10 million monthly active users, which is amazing for how fast they're growing. At the same time, that number is closer to a couple hundred million for ChatGPT, giving them undeniably an edge on the distribution front. Then, of course, there's Google, who's serving up something like 8 billion queries a day, which means you have to think that if they get it together, they have such an inherent advantage going in. Regardless, it is going to be a super interesting battle, one that it's hard to imagine we don't benefit from as consumers. One more little piece of OpenAI news before we get out of here today. An interesting sub-story from a Reddit AMA with OpenAI CEO Sam Altman yesterday. Altman says that the lack of compute is holding the company back. He wrote, all of these models have gotten quite complex. We also face a lot of limitations and hard decisions about how we allocate our compute towards many great ideas. Of course, we've seen a wave of headlines over recent months about how OpenAI is trying to address this issue. On the training side, the company is partnering with Oracle to build one of the largest training clusters in the world in Texas. For inference, they recently announced they would be using AMD GPUs and have plans to start designing and manufacturing their own chips, partnering with Broadcom and TSMC. Now, as an example of a feature being held up by a lack of compute, Altman referred to vision capabilities for ChatGPT's advanced voice mode, stating that it wouldn't arrive anytime soon. This feature was showcased during the demo in April, but didn't arrive when the rest of voice mode was rolled out in late September. Other big news from the AFA included other indefinite timelines on new products. An update to OpenAI's generative image model, DALI, has no timeline, with Altman stating we don't have a release plan yet. Sora, the company's generative video model, has also been held back, with Kevin Wheel, the company's chief product officer, saying the delay is due to the, quote, need to perfect the model, get safety, impersonation, other things right, and scale compute. Although the AMA was filled with news about delays, Altman insisted, we have some very good releases coming later this year. Nothing that we are going to call GPT-5, though. So there you have it. That is the story from OpenAI. And that will be the end of our daily brief today. Appreciate you listening as always. And until next time, peace.